Hello, hello, I'm Kitty. And I'm Christina. And welcome to Declutter for Optimal Homeschooling. Today, we're going to explore the benefits and challenges of homeschooling. And why a cluttered environment can make or break not only your child's learning success, but your entire family dynamic. By the end of this presentation, you will be equipped with the confidence of knowing that you have the skill set to make the right choice about your child's future. And you'll be equipped to not to be able to declutter any room, anytime, anywhere, for anyone quick, you know, quickly and with a minimum of overwhelm and also the habits to keep you and your children decluttered for life. Mm. Yeah. And we know that if you're an entrepreneur, you're already juggling lots of place. Matter of fact, you're worrying about ep optimizing your business and making it grow. And we know that you don't want to neglect your child and their future. That's a lot of work, isn't it? Absolutely. I, I don't have children and I, and I, I can't even imagine um, uh, entrepreneurs who have to juggle all those plates and have the stress of uh, wondering what is going on with their child and how is their child, which is an investment. Your, your children are an investment. Wouldn't you agree? It absolutely is. And it's one of our best investments for our future. But before we get into all that, Kitty has an exercise for us. So let's kind of just get into a little bit of mindset and thinking about this beautiful future. Thank you, Christina. All right. Um, close your eyes and imagine. Oh, I close them with you, but I can't. <laughs> you and your child are calm and super productive. You feel in control of your surroundings and not distracted by clutter. Your child can invite friends over on a minute's notice and nobody feels embarrassed. You can locate any item, any time with ease. No, no more of this, mom, where's my... <laughs> Has it has it any has that ever happened to you, Christina, or any of you watching on this recording? Mom! All right, you don't want me to do that again. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it has. And when it does, a little skip in the heart going, uh-oh, what do I have to do now? <laughs> Absolutely. Now, if and also your your eyes are still closed, okay? <laughs> if you're an entrepreneur, you can focus, imagining, being able to focus on your business with peace of mind, knowing that you're providing the best education for your child. Now, later on, we will invite you to learn how for as little as $17.97, you can achieve all that in a short 30 days. Now we're going to turn it over to Christina of Vibrant Education, Vibrant Family Education, pardon me. And she has been working for many, many years in this subject, and she's going to tell you all about it. Thank you, Christina. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Yes, everybody. I am Christina and I am the founder of Vibrant Family Education. And I help frustrated parents reimagine their child's education so that they can raise a happy, healthy, and successful child. I was a public school teacher for 27 years, and 25 of those years was in the traditional classroom. And then the last two years I was with this school district, I was actually in the online school for that district. And I helped create the K-2, the kindergarten through second grade program for online learning. And mm -hmm. I left because I realized that I had a higher calling. There were changes in the school district, changes with parent communication, changes with things that just really didn't help me connect with those parents. And I knew that I needed to support and empower as many parents and families as I possibly could by helping them take control of their education and their child's future. When I'm not focused on this education part of my life, I also volunteer at my church where I'm the wedding coordinator and I help with the communion service and then I also help with religious education. You know, 
there's a problem. There's an epidemic in our country right now in the United States. We have frustrated families. We have children who are not learning to their full potential. And unfortunately, we have a broken system that's trying to accomplish all of that. And then in fact, 65% of our fourth graders cannot read at a proficient level here in the United States. And that statistic came from the United States Department of Education. If a child can't read, a child can't continue their learning. They can't see their future. They can't know where to go get the information to create that successful life that they really want to have and our parents want them to have. So this is a real, real problem. How many of you want your child to actually be happy, healthy, and successful adults in the future? Raise your hand. Yeah, I know you're out there. Exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. How many of you know that at this point, the public school system is not a good fit for you and your family and your child's success? Yeah, raise your hand or put a one in the chat, whatever you need to do. Let us know that, yeah, you understand that this might be a little bit of an issue. Students are ready to learn in a non-traditional way, and we learned that through 2020, right? Um, parents have realized that it, to be involved in their parent in their sorry, to be involved in their education is the greatest thing that they can do. They can teach their core values like kindness and traditions and honesty and respect. And then they can also find the time to, help them be successful and ready for their future, right? We've also found that students learn better in a quiet place, away from, oh, sorry, a quiet, comfortable place. That's what I was trying to say. A quiet, comfortable place that is not full of distractions, right? And lots of times that means not reporting to the regular school building. Studies have shown that home educated students typically score 15 to 25 percent higher on standardized tests and um, 87 percent of a peer reviewed study shows that social, emotional and psychological development shown in homeschooled performance as yes, homeschooled students that they perform significantly better than a traditional school. So there are colleges that are looking for homeschool students because of this well-being that they come with and this love of learning that they have. Christina, could I interrupt just for a moment, please? Yeah, please do. Because you were saying, uh, you, you, were, you were telling some uh, important and uh, disturbing um, statistics. Wow. Uh, did I hear you correctly to say that 65% of fourth grade students are not reading at a proficient level? Correct. And that, those are current statistics. I just looked up 2023. Yeah. That's absolute, absolutely horrifying. Wouldn't yeah. you agree? Absolutely. We have kids who can't continue their learning because they can't read to do it. I mean, back in my day, it was it it was just accepted, uh, and the, those those children who couldn't read, they uh, or couldn't read at the proficient level, when then they were taken aside and given extra extra mm -hmm. tutoring. However, in today's school environment, and for, don't forget, I am in Canada. Our school system is different, and times have changed. But it sounds to me like that um, if, if they can't, if they, if they don't read at the proficient level, then they just kind of get left behind. Is, is that about right? Unfortunately, that's what's happening, yes. Uh, most schools will not retain a child or keep a child back anymore. They just keep pushing them through the system and they say eventually they'll catch up. But what they forget is that they can't. They can't catch up because they have a hole in their education. They're not learning to mastery. And that is part of why I left the classroom, because I could not reach 37-year-olds at the same time, right? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And something else I just want to break into, and you feel free, you're going to be asking me questions in, in my part. So exactly. um, um, it, this is uh, absolutely fascinating to me. The home educated typically score... 15 to 25 percent uh above public school yep 
in standardized testing? You would think, uh, or it, it, it seems counterintuitive, don't mm -hmm. you think? It does. You, you, yeah. you, you go to the school building and you get yourself some learning. And, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, but, um, but that, that is absolutely staggering. It certainly makes a, a strong case for homeschooling. Exactly. And, that's that's what you're here to help pe help people to to do. So do tell us more. Thank you. For right. Yeah, yeah, and you know that's what breaks my heart because when I started 27 years ago, our system was starting to crack. Our education system was starting to crack a little bit, but it's really cracked in the last few years. And you know, it like I said, my dream job became my nightmare job. I couldn't do it anymore because I couldn't connect with my kids. I couldn't connect with my parents. And I had kids that the system said, oh, just keep pushing them through. And I'm like, no, no, no. We have to make sure they get teaching the mastery. So yeah, you know, what do you need to know? Well, that what you need to know is that I have been there, right? I've been in this system. I had my own children in this system. And I experienced the frustration that a lot of parents have, that when your child isn't learning to their full potential or they're having issues, the fight and the struggle that you have to have to get them the services to help get them caught up. Maybe it's tutoring after school. Maybe it's in-school services. Maybe it's a special program because they have a learning disability or something that's causing a problem, right? Okay. And then also I've been there as a teacher, right? I've been there with 30 kids in my classroom, 37 year olds that are trying to get my attention and that I'm trying to keep on track and keep moving. Right. And even though I did my best, many of those students came in at different levels. Well, if you have 20 or 30 different levels inside your classroom, how do you meet every single student's needs? It's really difficult. And then I am not bashing teachers at all because I, you know, like I said, I was there. I know there were so many teachers who are working so hard to make this work, but they're constricted by policy, by curriculum, by a whole bunch of things that are out of their control. So, you know, don't, don't bash on them too hard. They're doing their best. But like I said, we have a broken system, right? Okay. And then also I have been there when the parents come to me and say, I need help. My student is acting out in class. They're acting at home. What is going on? And I help kind of coach those parents. It's like, well, let's look at this part of their education. Let's look at this part of their frustration. And let's see if we can help figure it out so they don't have that frustration and lack of confidence that is starting to build. And that's why uh, I, I'm sure that that's why you developed some of the elements in in the programs that in, that you work with. Uh, can you tell us? A, um, a, can you give us a couple of examples? Um, exactly. Yeah, I, I I want to. Yes. So you know, I believe that it doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to have a frustrated child, frustrated parents, and children who aren't learning. As a matter of fact, part of those elements that you were just asking about is things that I put into the system to help figure this out. So we talk about learning styles and learning times. When does your child learn best and how do they learn best? Mm -hmm. We also talk about routines and schedules. How does it fit into your family? How does it fit into your day, your week, your month? And then we also talk about the learning space and what's needed in that learning space and what that learning space needs to look like, right, Miss Kitty? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what that space needs to look Amen. like so that they can be um, comfortable, and focused and ready to learn. And then a lot of parents really ask about how is my child going to be connected with other people if they're being homeschooled? And I get into that too. So here are two questions that parents usually ask me as they're thinking about this whole process of the homeschooling, right? The first question they ask is, am I qualified to be my child's teacher? And I emphatically say, yes. Because you've been their teacher from the very beginning. Think about birth through five years old, right? You were their main teacher. They might have gone off to preschool a little bit, but you were there. You have taught them everything they've learned up until that point, or most of what they've learned, right? And we want to make sure that you understand that you are the perfect teacher for your child. You know their habits. You know how they learn. You know their quirks. 
all those things, you know your child best, right? So think about this. I had a set of twins that was in my classroom and the parent would come to me and say, you know, Angel, she's doing an awesome job. When it's time to write, she sits down with her crayons and her pencils and she gets started and she's really, really excited. Beatrice, when we sit down with Beatrice, it is a struggle every single time. She doesn't want to pick up that pencil. She doesn't want to pick up that paper. She doesn't want to get started. And I'm like, well, what does she like to do? And she's like, well, she's a little more active. She likes standing up. She likes moving around. She likes writing bigger than on the piece of paper. And I said, you know what? Then you have a choice when you're doing your learning. Grab that expo marker, grab that wipe off marker and go to the sliding glass door and let her write on the sliding glass door or grab the chalk and go out on the sidewalk and let her practice her sentences on the sidewalk, sidewalk chalk. There are ways that you can help your child learn and give them the freedom to be comfortable when you're doing that homeschooling. So you are the, your child's best teacher. And you know what they need. Can I speak into that? Absolutely. I saw your face. It's like, Kitty wants to say something about that one. <laughs> Kitty's exploding. Kitty's exploding because Kitty is, is Beatrice. Okay. Kitty is Beatrice. Kitty, it, 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 and we're going to talk more about ADHD later later on um, and why it, why it is so critical to, to that 5% of the population, which is diagnosed as ADHD. Yeah. Um, um, hard to sit still? Check. Very mm -hmm. creative? Check. Yeah, uh, when you you told me this story before, and what did I say to you? I said something like, "I will uh, uh, give me an I, expo marker. I want to go writing on the, on the glass to my school." <laughs> that, that was absolutely marvelous. I, that that really, I, I mean, it just really spoke to me and speaks to me about how it, you couldn't you couldn't be doing that in the classroom, clearly. So no, the child is basically, you know, just kind of sitting there at the desk, right? And just itching to just sort of, uh, I'm picturing myself here, uh, yeah. just itching to um, be up and doing something or what's that spot on the wall kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you for sharing that. I just love that story. <laughs> and the last thing I want to say about parents being the best teacher is that you know your family values, you know your core values, you know your characteristics that you want your ch children to grow up with. Maybe it's hard work, maybe it's grit, maybe it's perseverance. You know those things that will really help your child be successful in the future, and you can teach those values along with the other lessons that are happening. So you are a great teacher for your child, okay? Mm -hmm. Another question that parents ask a lot is, will I have time? Especially our business, busy entrepreneurs that we were talking to at the beginning. They're like, how in the world am I going to squeeze school into my already busy day of meetings and clients and work and everything else that I need to do? Well, what I want you to think about is education at home. That's what I call homeschooling. It's education at home. That's the phrase I love because you're bringing that education home, right? And the thing you have to think about is that because you're not in a classroom, because your child is not on a schedule where they have to go to lunch and go to PE and this and that and everything else, schooling, learning does not take as long as in a traditional building, right? So think about that. It doesn't take as long. They're focused. They can learn more in a shorter amount of time. They don't have to change class periods. They don't have to wait for the other 27 kids to grab their lunchbox and line up and go to the cafeteria to eat their lunch and losing time, right? Instead, you get to start integrating lessons into their learning. So guess what? Now your child gets to learn how to cook because they're having lunch at home with you. Now they're learning more skills for their future, right? Maybe it's time to clean up at the end of the day. Now they're getting those skills that will help them in the future, right? So all of those things are woven in. So the timing is a lot, lot different. The other thing is that you have to know that you have some flexibility when you are doing education at home. And this reminds me of Kaylee. Kaylee was one of my star students. She was such a sweetheart. And when she 
came to me, she was excited to learn and her parents were excited to learn. And this was during COVID. So they had to be there. Right. And at first they're like, oh, how are we going to make this work? But Kaylee was such a go-getter. She loved being up at 630 in the morning, believe it or not. She had her schoolwork, her academics, her reading, writing, math done by 8.30, two hours later. And then she was ready to experience the day. And her parents was, this is awesome. Now we get to give her more. We get to take her to classes during the day when it's not so crowded. We get to have special learning experiences with her. And we get to weave her throughout our day as well. And so instead of education becoming a burden, it became a learning experience throughout the rest of the day. So it doesn't take that much time. There's flexibility. You've got this. I, I just love that when you're, who would think that homeschooling, and I, I know a couple of parents in the States that, that homeschool, and they, um, I always wondered kind of why, but you make such a good point about uh, about the their learning to cook. They can make their they can make their sandwich with your with your tutelage. It's not just uh, send them off to school with the with the lunch bag and it's already done for you, which is lovely. Don't get me wrong, believe yeah. me. Uh, I want someone to make my sandwiches for me, but um, when I'm 18 years old in college, I should have some life skills, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, because guess what? Unfortunately, we are getting young adults out there who don't have those life skills, right? Yeah. And one last thing along that line with time, if you're a busy entrepreneur, how many times are you driving your child back and forth to school? How many times are you waiting in that line in front of the school to pick them up, right? And that might be awesome, wonderful time. I don't want to say that that's horrible time because you do get to talk with your child, hopefully, and you do get to you know, connect with them during that time. But what if you could replace that driving time and that waiting time with learning time and client time so then you have more family time later? So you're mm -hmm. just replacing and moving it around. So that timing thing is really something to think about, the flexibility of it. Mm -hmm. You mentioned um, uh, a client of yours that that he he did the math on yeah. on how long it 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 uh, it took him. Can you share that again for us? Yeah, I actually I had a couple of different people talk to me, and they were losing any, up to two hours a day waiting in those lines before and after school. So an hour in the morning and an hour at night. So you have the drive time to the school and then you don't just get to drop the kiddo off. There's usually a caught line of other cars, other parents who are taking their kiddos. And so you're waiting in that line. So that's like a half an hour. And then by the time you drive back, you, like I said, basically you lose or you have time, an hour to repurpose in the afternoon and in the morning if you um, educate at home. Yeah. Wow. Wow. All right. Yeah. What else you got for us, Christina? I have three things that I want to tell you to help you get started right now. Maybe you came to our meeting today. Not sure. You're like, I don't know about this homeschool. I don't think I can do this, but hopefully some of the information I've given you gives you a little bit of a why, a little bit of a, oh yeah, this is really necessary. And hopefully a little bit more confidence because I've told you why you're the best teacher and how it can work with timing. And then there's three more things I want you to know. If you're going to do homeschooling or education at home, make sure you have your tool school toolbox already. Have everything in one place. Have your computer or tablet that you're going to use for learning. Have your pencils, your markers, everything like that. So you're not running around the house, oh, like Kitty, hey, mom, where's, <laughs> right? You don't want to be doing that in the middle of your focused learning time. So have that toolbox set up, ready to go. So that's one thing that will really help you get started along this, right? And another thing is that you want to make sure that um, you start talking to your child because school will look different. If you already have your child in school and now they aren't going to go back to that school building, things are going to look different. So, you, you know, you don't want to just spring it on them um, September 1st. Oh, yeah, you're not going back to school. You really want to have these conversations. School's going to look a little bit different. And you want to talk to them. What are the pros and what are the cons of this change? 
because they might say, oh, you know, well, what about this? I'm worried about my friends and I'm worried about this and that. And you get to talk to them about how you're going to make sure that they don't miss out on friendships and things like that. And that's part of what I was talking. I'll be talking about more. Right. And then the third thing is that you want to make sure you have your legal documents in order. If your child has already been in school, you want to make sure that you are not having a truancy officer knock on your door and say, where's your child? They haven't been in school. Here's your ticket because you haven't been fulfilling your educational duties with your child. So you want to make sure you have all of that set up. So you'll need to just start doing your research. But later, I might be able to help you with that. So just hang on. Kitty, I hope that's been very helpful to everybody. Yes, yes, I, I, I it, it's been helpful to me, and I'm not, I'm, I don't even need the, need the information, but I wow. do, I, I really want to reiterate how fascinating it is, it, it really is, especially when I was reflecting this morning, as you know, and uh, it's, um, it's really eye opening, I want to ask you a couple of quick questions, just nitpicky questions, what would ticket ticket uh, the um, truancy ticket run what, what kind of money are we looking at there a couple hundred dollars at least good heavens yeah and it's not it's not just a fifty dollar not a ten dollar it's a couple hundred dollars if i remember right now i haven't done my complete research and of course each right. state is different yeah. but no. it, it's not something small plus and who likes having the police show up at your door right <laughs> I don't know what we have in Canada and for this. Um, I didn't think to look it up, but I, uh, but I will. And that could be actually an interesting thing for, for you to look up for, yeah. for Canada as well, because of course our viewers are, and whoever watches this video, because it will be, you know, it's, it, it's going to be available for all y'all. And we're, um, we're pleased to present the information. Quick, uh, how, um, after how long do they send the truancy officer? Is it a couple of days? Is it a couple of weeks? What, what's typical? Again, it's, you know, different from state to state and school district sure. to school district. But um, usually if you don't show up for 10 days, they have to drop you off of the school rosters and the school roll. And then they really start thinking, well, wait a second, if I haven't gotten a records request from a different school, they've transferred to a different school, then there's something going on. And then they start asking, the teachers and counselors start asking around, is this kiddo still in the area, da, da, da. And yeah, so within a month, probably, you'll get at least your first contact from them saying what's going on. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. And uh, I, I was empathizing with the child. Mm -hmm. uh the, the seven-year-old that's uh, oh i'm not going to a school building what's up with this uh and feeling his his, his confusion feeling his um uh, well what's going on what's going to happen and i i would find it difficult to talk to a child about that like i, I i'd be able to empathize but then they would have questions and i would i would I'm not sure that I could answer them. And I think that's partly what you you help people with is Absolutely. to um, answer the tough questions that yes. kids ask, right? This is yes. worse than the birds and the bees. The birds and the bees, yeah, well, you know, you kind of mumble through it, you, you get through it, right? Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm sure we're um, you're gonna have more to say. Um, this has been absolutely fascinating. Thank you, Christina. Awesome. But you know, Kitty, it's not just all about me. We're also decluttering. We're also making sure that that home learning space is set up for them. And that is your job. Would you please take it away? Tell us how you're going to and give us some tips and tricks. All right. Um, I'm going to explain um, the surprising effects of uh, the clutter can have on your child's ability to absorb what they're learning. And I'm going to give you my one how many christina one 
<laughs> strategy to get you decluttered quickly and with a minimum of overwhelm. And we'll close with a couple of key, uh, just a couple key tips. I'm not gonna give you my, my whole toolkit here, uh, you know, uh, but just to help you and your child stay decluttered for life. Because as I always say, what is the point of getting decluttered if you can't stay that way? It's just like when you have a professional organizer come into your home and they, uh, and they get everything is lovely for about six months and then it all goes and goes to uh -E -double -L, the hockey stick whatever uh, <laughs> and you're you're left wondering but but what happened uh we're gonna we're gonna take that that one worry away from me. So let me start with, um, uh, well, I'll tell you who I am. I am Kitty Andrews, CEO of declutterthebrain.com. And I help six figure entrepreneurs to declutter their space and brain so that they can maximize their productivity and their profit by being better focused uh, I'm also known as your thought organizer uh, because uh, one client said you help you and you don't organize people you organize their thoughts so that they can organize themselves. Exactly. Uh, I do have over 20 years experience in helping people to get their surroundings under control and through that. And through my ADHD I have created a step by step how many Christine not one system <laughs> that has helped my clients go from ho-hum to holy cow hmm. I, <laughs> yeah. i'm um, i'm humbled and pleased to say that i'm an international best-selling author and speaker i pre presented at stanford and harvard and contributed articles to the la tribune magazine and usa today but and actually, also I'll say, all of that is great, and I'm proud to say that. But what I'm most proud of is the clients that I work with that have phenomenal successes by decluttering. Because people come to me, they they think that they they think that their challenge is physical clutter, but every single time they we end up we end up decluttering the other five four pillars of their life we now not only their home but their heart meaning their relationships their uh their 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 health their habits and their head hence the company name declutter the brain i love it and all of my clients find that uh it they are more calm they are more focused and so you're starting to wonder, well, we've just spent the last uh, 40 minutes on um, uh, talking about kids. What does this have to do with, uh, with children? Ah, everything. <laughs> hang with me here. Tell you what, and, and we're going to get, we're going to uh, dive into mental clutter just for a moment, but not yet. Imagine if you will. You have uh, uh, your your home is cluttered, and you perhaps you're in, you're ashamed to invite people over, or you just always feel like I've got to get to that, I've got to get to that too, and maybe your your partner is ragging on you because why can't you why can't you keep this clean why can't you put away the laundry yada yada, uh, and what does this do? This causes stress in you, the parent. And what happens with that? Unfortunately, that stress, make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, that, that stress transfers to your child. And I can tell you, I, I know whereof I speak. I don't remember, and frankly, if my, if my childhood home was cluttered, but I do know that my mother was constantly stressed mm -hmm. and distant and not present and the, the by the way this is a world premiere i've never shared this before but i decided since we're talking about children today that it, that it, that it's important it struck a nerve with me so so thank you for letting me share absolutely it's important it what's is, that it is so important that people realize that their stress does 
impact their children in ways. I mean, I was one of those moms who tried to hide my stress from my kids. And instead it made them think, well, what's wrong? Did I do something wrong that mom's upset with me that she's not talking to me, right? And what I realized was that was a mistake. And so now I talk to parents about, please share what you can to let your kids know it's not their fault. There's something else going on. So thank you for sharing this super important. Uh, thank you. I, it's um, it, people think all oh, their kids that they're they're not they're not noticing, but I think studies have uh, studied. Well, I mean, you can feel stress in the womb from from what I understand. Uh, and if you you would think, all right, well, clutter, it's not such a big deal. You know, I'm not really stressed about it. But what if you can have a way that it's one less thing to to have on your plate especially if you're a busy entrepreneur and there's so many other benefits of, of decluttering anyway which we're going to talk about in a minute but uh if that's one less thing that is standing between you and a wonderful relationship with your child hey it's worth looking into isn't it absolutely <laughs> All right, let's talk about a couple of interesting statistics um, directed at, at adults first. The National Association of Professional Organizers tells us that the average North American, at least, spends 8,760 hours of their life searching for and replacing things. That is one year. That is one year. I'm going to let that land. What could you be doing with all of that time and mental energy that you're spending? They also report that the average North American spends about $800 a year on a, a just replacing things. You know, the masking tape that you know that you have two or three rolls, but darned if you can find them and you're, you, you're already about to, you want to paint that wall this afternoon. You need the masking tape. So what do you do? You run to the Dollar General and you, again, you spend that gas and that time, mind you, even if it's only half an hour and you've got your masking tape, the third roll in your house uh, or fourth. <laughs> Don't get me started about my father's collection of, 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 of uh, tape all over the place, but I digress. Uh, <laughs> what happens with that is number one, that's money that uh, you can spend on yourself, you can spend on your child. Uh, and that time, we were talking earlier about mom, where is my all right, well, we can't find the markers. So what do we do? We go to Walmart and, and we pick up some more. And one client, she, um, <laughs> when we started decluttering her office, she could not believe how many uh, replace and uh, spare markers she had. It, 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 most of them had gone dry, but she yeah. bought them because she forgot that she had some. Good example, yes? Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's go to children's studies. Um, uh, we're going to go across the pond for a moment to a British study, which tells us that the average 10-year-old owns 238 toys and plays with about 12 daily. Huh? Yeah, okay. A uh, little bit of decluttering needed there. Yeah. Um, uh, now we come back to America and... A related study is, um, let's see here, 47% uh, hang on a second, no, 7% uh, of the world's children live in, no, 3.1%, sorry, uh, typo, 3.1% um, uh, of the world's children live in America, but these same children own 40% of the toys in the world. Whoa, that is a lot of toys for a small amount of children around the world. That is <laughs> it. Well, it may it makes you think of two things. No, number one, our kids have too too much. Number two, the ones across the pond have too little. Uh, they need to share the wealth a little bit here. Yeah. Right? yeah. All right, another study. And I, I found it difficult, I'll be honest, to find, to find specific 
studies on on children and clutter but i found it interesting that um, uh, two or three studies there were no numbers in it but that they found that living in more disorganized homes uh, they had more trouble regulating their emotions isn't that interesting yeah and what does that contribute to the, a disturbed family dynamic? I've seen it. I've seen it. I've heard heard yelling families. Uh, what does it also contribute to? Well, if they're either tired because they're over and emotional or um, they're distracted or just just pick one. You're all big people. You can imagine the consequences. Can you uh, jump in there for a second? I, in my classroom, it was the very same thing. If I didn't keep my classroom tidy and neat, my kids were impacted, right? Whenever I got too many teaching posters up on the wall and it was too distracting visually, they couldn't get the next lesson in because they were looking at that poster and that poster all over the place, right? So I knew that when that started happening, when there was a certain vibration, kind of a noise level that would happen when they were distracted and everything, that it was time to take some of those things off the wall and make sure that the room was neat and tidy. So, you know, I know that's anecdotal and it's not a study, but it's a real life experience knowing that the kids truly are impacted. Yeah. I and and thank you thank you for sharing that and you 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 told when you, when you told me that before I'm so glad you mentioned this um, I I was surprised because of course we think of clutter at, as being at home and I and I told you that we don't think of clutter being in the school we think of the the, the school building as all nice nice and tidy and neat and you know markers pointed one way and all of this kind of stuff. Uh -uh. <laughs> What you're, what you're telling me is that school can be just as cluttered, if not more so, than at home. But if the teacher is too busy with, what did you say, 30 kids, uh, some of whom just were falling through the cracks, then the, the teacher that doesn't maybe doesn't have time or doesn't even notice sometimes because she's so busy and worrying spending mental energy about the kids so it becomes a snowball it does I, yep it truly does wow wow okay yeah so uh so clutter the decluttering is important no matter where and did you notice uh you would notice a difference in the behavior after you removed uh yes yeah, things calm down and settle down again. Absolutely. Wow. That, that's really interesting. All right. And many children, I touched on ADHD before, 5% mm -hmm. um, of the population is is, is, mm, is either diagnosed or just is. Basically, the, the, the popular, what we say, is is we're about five percent of the population and what does that and what does that and what are the hallmarks of adhd well attention deficit hyperactive disorder okay so you can pretty much con connect the dots there and you've got your beatrice there we're not saying she's adhd but it's one of those typical traits where the those children we uh because i am <laughs> Heart carrying, flag waving, foot stomping member. Yes, indeed. Oh, yes. Uh, and we're the ones with the big ideas and the creative and, and all of this. But with that, number one, it can come clutter. Number two, lack of focus and difficulty focusing on a project, say, for example, a, a writing project. And then what comes down with that also is, unfortunately, uh, you get you know, the, uh, a well-meaning parent saying, why can't you just sit still and do your homework or whatever? Um, and what that says, which translates into negative messages, which translates into low self-esteem, which unfortunately, I am here to tell you, it can a, uh, translate that can follow you all your life so i'm going to ask you here now watching this recording because we are we we will uh it's just christina and me and you watching this 
I'm going to ask you, do you want your child to actually grow up to be healthy, mentally healthy, and with a good sense of self-esteem to become a successful adult in the future? I know you do. That's why you're here. So we're going to talk, talk a little bit more about, about how you can make this happen. Yes, uh, I'm excited. I love it when Katie tells us how to get this started and how to keep it going because I was one of those people that she helped and I was so grateful when she did. So Kitty, tell us. And tell us right. one thing is, you keep saying one. <laughs> Yeah, and I think we'll start with that. I do. Uh, I want to share a story about a, about a client, but before I no, no, we'll we'll jump in. We'll do, we'll talk about the client first, and then we can, and then I can explain how I help them. Um, now, uh, two. I had two clients who joined me in the spring of 2020, and we all know what was happening then. And they were both, um, you know, uh, married with one. It's it's true. It was just one. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you'll get the joke of that in a moment. Um, um, they had one child. Uh, the one of the kids was twelve years old. The other was at that time uh, six, turning on seven. Seven, and they they came to me and said. We have to homeschool. We don't have a choice. And the place is cluttered. We, we don't even know where, where they're going to work. And um, we don't also don't want them to grow up as, as cluttered adults as I am. This is them talking, okay? So this is the scenario. You have parents who are saying, number one, I don't want them to grow up with my habits. Number two, we don't even have a, a workspace. There's no dining room space. So, you know, we eat in front of the TV, uh, all of this. They didn't know what to do. So we powered through it and got them ready over that summer for the for for the September school year. And one of those people, Heidi, she had it, hers involved completely taking apart her daughter's room completely taking apart her office, switching rooms. It was a massive project and painting the rooms. And yeah, it was it was a massive project. The one with the six-year-old, it was easier, but Dawn had to uh, concentrate more on her own clutter and re-educating her mind as to, well, do I really need to buy these, these kind of things? Now, what holds people back? from decluttering. Okay, we all we all accumulate everybody. The cat accumulates. Okay, we all do. But um what keeps us from going and going through it and decluttering every few months or or what have you? Overwhelm. Just that is the number one reason that I have found is uh overwhelm keeps people from decluttering. And it can be a fear of, whoa, what's in there? I don't think I even want to know. Uh, to uncovering ghosts, if you will. Uh, to just, I don't want to. I don't want to. I've tried it before. It doesn't work. Or I've done it. And then it goes right back to, um, to where it was. And I just, uh, I just don't want to because I, I'm, uh, I know that I'm going to fail. Well, number one, get that negative message out of your head. That's, that's your first lesson for today. <laughs> I present a little differently from Christina. I kind of just <laughs> let you have it every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> but she does too. She's just quieter about it, okay? Just <laughs> fair wording, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so um what we did was we took Heidi and Dawn at the, and we had a group program at the team at the time along with other people and what we did was we took them on exactly the same how many Christina one system and it is my one system which I have designed uh partly because frankly it was the only way that made sense to wow. me uh, as as uh, it, it, as an ADHD or as a as a um, spectrum autism spectrum 
uh, you know what I mean, autism spectrum uh, person. It was the only way that made sense to me. And I'll tell you, okay, yeah, Kitty, tell us what the one system is. All right, I will. It's one room at a time, one area of that room at a time, and one thing at a time. So I'll go over them quickly. One room at a time, why do you want to do this? Because if you say, for example, you start in um, start in one room, your office, and then you say, okay, I'm doing this for a bit. Now I'm going to go and do the and do the spare bedroom. Well, I'll tell you what, by the time you get back to the office, you've forgotten what you were doing. Mm -hmm. And you, you frankly, you're out of character. Yeah, and you have to spend that 15 minutes going, okay, where was I? What was I doing? Okay, now the train is, is going and going. And when you choose that one room, please, in the name of all that's holy, do not choose the basement with the 30 years worth of Christmas decorations. Don't do that to yourself. No, no. Okay. I want <laughs> Believe me, she's right. <laughs> Overwhelm immediately. Start with something that doesn't give you that panic attack, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. So then we go to the one area of that room at a time. And it's exactly the same principle, except in a smaller venue. So as opposed to um let's go to the office because many of those watching are are entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and you um you okay i'll start in this area well you know maybe i should start up and you know my desk my closet you know what i'm tired i'll do it tomorrow all right uh okay. so it's tough it is tough i'll tell you this it is tough to make that decision to um, to as to which area to start in but once you make that decision stick with it and I'll tell you why because just as your child gets momentum as they're as they're learning you get momentum with which with um, with the area that you're doing and if um, in, a, in our program if I'm helping your, your child to declutter their room okay we're sticking with one which is easy for the child to uh, to absorb, to learn. They're not they're not spread out all over the place because children need simple, don't they, Christina? Yes, they do, and they need routine and they need more repetitions until it's stuck. So don't be afraid to jump all. You know, don't be forced and rushed to jump all over the place. One thing until mastery. Yep. Exactly. And then speaking of one thing, that was a good segue to the number th the third element, which is one thing at a time. And you're, yeah, I know you're looking at me, you're saying my, you haven't seen my kid's room. It is up to here with toys. Okay. Like, yeah. Uh, you're out of your mind. Back up the jump truck, boys. Okay. <laughs> no. No. Is it tedious? I'm afraid so. Is it time consuming? Yeah, the first time. But is it also the number one way to train your brain that you remain clutter free for life? Absolutely. And I'll just tell you quickly how. Why? Now, I'll, I'll, I'll have to give you an adult story for this just, just quickly, but it was Absolutely. My very first client with an L-shaped desk. We're doing okay for time. Um, L-shaped desk. And it was covered, covered, covered with paper. And she looked at me like I was from Venus when I said, okay, well, let's start on the first piece of paper. Well, she said, <laughs> she said, okie dokie. All right. She started finding that she was having bank statements that she didn't need, utility bills that she didn't need. And she said, I'm just going to get all of this online. So she retrained her brain. Her brain found a different way to have the data, but not have it in front of her. But here was the, here, here was the kicker part is when she, she, had a bunch of trade magazines that she threw away about 50 bucks worth and that she had never even read and she reported that she next time she was in that store she, her arm reached for that magazine she said well, wait a minute now i just threw away about 50 bucks worth 
I'll buy them about every two months and that will be fine. So that's less clutter coming yeah. into the house. So do you see what I mean about retraining your brain? And if you can retrain your child's brain at the same time, the earlier you can, the better. Not only do you have a comfortable, relaxing family dynamic with nobody carping at each other, but that child has the neatest dorm room in the college. Thanks to you and your smart choice. Exactly. That is awesome and wonderful. Kitty, I would be so embarrassed if you would have seen my teacher's desk at sometimes. The kids would even comment every once in a while. It's like, Mrs. Averett, where's it's like, um, it's in that pile over there. <laughs> so yeah, we won't talk about a teacher's desk in the middle of teaching. Uh -huh. but, <laughs> you've you you've evolved since then i'm sure yep. let's get it decluttered for everybody so the whole family feels amazing and you're right without that stress of clutter without that oh well you need to clean up here i need to clean up there you can take that time and mm -hmm. use it for something more fun like going to a movie taking a walk doing something different because you don't have to revisit that same thing every single week thank That's you that's right. That's right. Um, because because life is too short, even if you're seven years old. It's a you know it's a, it's it's meant to be enjoyed, and that is why I include these kind of things. So this is one. And this is the system that uh, that we walked Heidi and Dawn through. And they, have there been backslides? Yes, there have. But um, but basically, they both have the confidence to know that ah, it's just a little back backslide where we'll be we'll be right as rain and in uh you know no pro no problem i know what to do i just don't feel like doing it right now right <laughs> exactly okay so there's your one system that being one room at a time one area of that room at a time one thing at a time uh there are many more applications for this but we're just talking about the the physical application today. Uh, remember that um, stress is clutter for you and for your child. And it doesn't need to be, as Christina said earlier, it doesn't have to be that way. Okay, and it, it can easily be done. And that is why I, I, I include very simple steps in my programs. Um, now, what can we, what, what can we um, take? The takeaway is, all right, you've got your one system. A um, couple of key habits. And like I said before, I'm not giving you my whole toolbox, but a couple of key ones that, are, that will really, really help. Um, hope, you're, hope you all get your pen and pencil, but I think you'll remember this. One is my waitress tip. I was I worked in restaurants for many years, and the the rule, the general rule, was especially in one that was run by Greeks. God bless them. Never walk uh, through the restaurant empty-handed. There is always something that you can pick up. Uh, a napkin dispenser needs filling, uh, the salt shaker, whatever, a uh, table needs wiping. Never be walking through the restaurant empty handed. And how does that translate to you? Easy. There is a coffee cup in your bedroom. I'm pretty sure of it. Unless, unless you've been training yourself. <laughs> okay, there's a coffee cup in, in Christina's office. What's she going to do at the end of the day? We're going to talk more about that in a second. She's going to, or when she goes to the kitchen, she's going to take that coffee cup. Okay, she, you end up, if you have empty hands, I'm here to tell you, you feel weird walking through the house with empty hands after you develop this habit. So that's the waitress tip. Never walk through your house empty handed. Uh, second one is take five minutes at the end of the day to clear, to just quickly tidy the area that that um, in question, whether that be your child's room with the toys after they've been playing, takes five minutes. Once you're organized, I tell, I'll tell you, it only takes five minutes. Or if it's your, your desk 
at the end of the day or the kitchen. Well, maybe that's going to be 10 minutes, but believe me, it gets faster and faster and faster and faster every single time you do it. And that is how you stay decluttered for life. And as parents make this choice for homeschooling or educating at home, same thing at the end of the school day, you tidy everything up so it's ready for the very next day when learning begins. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Well, that is what I have. Now, what, uh, what do we have for the nice people, Christina? Well, you know what? We've just spent about an hour together and we've covered so many different things about how the parents are qualified to be the teacher, how time isn't going to be used as much in education as you think you won't be losing time. We've gotten ways to be effective in decluttering our homes and making the space ready for learning and all of these different things. And we know that when we get all of this in line, that our children will be ready to absorb their learning and not be frustrated. And that will make a healthy and happy kiddo that will later learn the skills to be super successful, right? And we will know that we're gonna be decluttered for life. Now we had a lot that we learned, but I think we only scratched the surface. I think really there'll be a lot more questions and a lot more things that we could help you out with. So Kitty, I think we have something that could help them out when they scratch that surface and say, oh no, well, what about this? And what about this? And what about this? Agreed. And yes, uh, we we actually designed a, a, a brand new program that I don't think exists in the world. I'd be very surprised if it did uh, because Christina and I met under the strange circumstances and you know how you meet people for a reason and you don't know why, but then, it, but then the answer reveals itself to it later on. And th this is why we believe that we were thrown together is to help parents like you to really maximize your, ch your child's education and have peace of mind uh, doing it. And if you're an entrepreneur, help you to crush it even more in your business because you feel empowered. You feel confident. You feel like you're on top of the world because everything is beautiful okay come on i wasn't going to get through the whole thing without bursting into song i i did my best i did my best <laughs> okay so this is why we believe that personalized one-on-one -on -one coaching is an important first step to getting you on solid ground we you've you've gotten to know us over the last hour and yeah there are there are books and uh audio tapes and, and all of these kind of things. But Christina and I actually specialize in, do, do we have a couple of automated programs? Yes, we do and PDFs and whatever, but we believe that the one-on-one -on -one is what gets the best results. And um, what works for one home situation, it may not work for another. So it has to be personalized. Wouldn't you agree, Christina? Absolutely, because the same way with teaching, not everybody learns the same. So mm -hmm. you might have a child that needs more active learning. You know, might have a child who needs more quiet learning. And I can help you through that. With 27 years of experience, I worked with pretty much every kind of kid out there. Amen, sister. If you can't do it, I don't know who can. And you've got a perfect example of uh, Beatrice and, and her sister there. You've got two different learning personalities in the same home. Good heavens to Betsy. All right. So now I'm going to invite you to do the same exercise that we did earlier, but armed with this extra knowledge of um, the, the that we hope that you have found have found valuable because we put our heart and soul into it and we do appreciate you watching by the way um all right so close your eyes and imagine that your you and your child are calm and super productive you feel in control of your surroundings and not distracted by clutter your child can invite friends over on a moment's notice without anybody feeling embarrassed. You can locate any item anytime with ease. No more, mom. <laughs> and if you're an entrepreneur, 
Are your eyes still closed? Yes, they are. I can't see you at home. If you're an entrepreneur, you can focus on your business with peace of mind, knowing that you are providing the very best education for your child. Now, what if I tell you that Christina and I can make that happen? Mm -hmm. What if I tell you that we can make it happen in a short 30 days for as little as 1797? No decimal point. Want to learn more? I know you do. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Our scholastic success. Dude, say that five times. Uh, scholastic <laughs> boot camp. Thank you. 30-day boot camp even. 30 days is specially designed with both of our coaching elements intertwined to give you maximum success. And we were just talking about peace of mind. You have that peace of mind knowing, mind, knowing that you are with not one, but two. How many, Christine? No. Two. two. Right, yeah, okay. Two. Well, one. Uh, yeah. Guiding you and your child to a, a calm and productive environment. As an entrepreneur, you're already juggling enough plates. We talked about this, um, and but uh, we also know that you're. It, it's a lot of work. As, um, even parents that uh, that are not entrepreneurs, it's a lot of work, and yeah, it's hard. You don't have to go it alone. That's the beauty. You it is so alone. done. We do the heavy lifting for you. All of those little decisions, where to start, what to do. So do any of you have a cleaning lady? This is a rhetorical question. How, imagine how it feels if you don't, to not have to worry about keeping your house clean. Somebody's looking after that for you and it feels good, right? Now, how amazing will it feel when you have the two of us helping you to make all of those decisions? Ah, yes. Okay, so let's go over what happens in this in these 30 days. You meet um, just briefly, you meet four times with Christina and four times with me. So you have two meetings a week and week one, Christina uh, gets you to know, yeah, I've got, I've got so much to tell you. Sorry, I've got to refer to notes because this is hot. Ladies and gentlemen, this is news that you need to know. Uh, uh, Christina gets to know you and your child's home environment and the learning and current learning styles, what needs to change, what should stay, and she helps you to choose the best learning area. And in your session with me a couple of days later, we declutter that learning area. We get we, we at least get the ball rolling and then you've got homework. Yeah, you don't get away with me without homework and same with Christina. Yeah. All right, moving on to week two. Christina helps you to get out of the classroom mentality and into a more creative way of learning so that they're learning, but they don't know that they're learning. If you follow maybe nature walks, for example, that's that's learning. And in my in in my session a couple of days later, we we design the newly decluttered workspace uh, with the pretty little tote bins and whatever, it, and whatever it is that you need. Now, moving on to week three, and I'll tell you what, these weeks pass fast. They do. Christina goes through the legal ease that she was talking about earlier about unenrolling from school. Should you do so? Because you may decide not to. But at least you have informed decisions and a wonderful, comfortable learning environment. Because even if you keep them in school, they, they got to do their homework when they come Home, home. Yes, exactly. Homework and projects. You want to have a space for that to be happening. Amen. And she also helps you to make socialization plans. We do not want your child to be a hermit. No, we don't. Yeah. Okay, that's, yeah. that's not not healthy. <laughs> and speaking of socialization, my job that week is to help you to declutter the entrance and the living room so that you're, you well. So that's y'all come. Come on in. Come on in, break out the break out the pop tarts and the whatever kids drink. <laughs> Healthy snacks. <laughs> you. That's what it is, right? Yeah, bad kitty, bad kitty, no pop tarts. <laughs> I don't think I've even seen pop tarts. I don't know if they still make them, oh, but yes. I guess they and do. One of your thirty different flavors now. <laughs> oh my god, the, the sugar, the humanity. All right, <laughs> okay. 
Week four, Christina helps you to set the schedule in the curriculum, again, whether you choose to homeschool or not. And I finish our adventure as I help you to tidy the kitchen so that you can make those nutritious snacks and um, uh, meals. And then I provide you with strategies more than what you've had already today with me uh, to stay decluttered. So what's the result? At the end of 30 days, you have a solid learning foundation and a tidy home, and you are equipped with the mindset and skills to maximize and maintain your investment with us. Yes, there is an investment. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Now, actually, we're going to talk about it right now. We are. Yeah, the regular investment for this uh, for this power pack, if I do say so myself. Uh, two of us at once. Oh, yeah. <laughs> be brave. Be very brave. And be bold and go forward. Exactly. Is 1997. That's not $19.97. You're all big people. You know what we're talking about. 1997. But we are offering it to you at this event. For uh, at a discount of 10%. That's right. Peace of mind, a tidy home, and calm and productive children. Hello, for only $17.97. Now, if all this did was to help you and your kids experience newfound energy, clarity, confidence during education time and year round, would it be worth it? I believe it would. I would have really appreciated it as a young mom earlier <laughs> in my life. Indeed. All right. Wait, there's more. There's always more with us because we are here to, to provide value. Okay. It is very rare in the coaching industry to offer a money back guarantee. Why? Because many, many, many coaches are afraid. They're afraid they're not going to deliver. They're afraid their client won't get results. With us, we're not afraid. Plain and simple, we are not afraid because we know that our programs work. We, we know because you submit the homework, you show up for the calls, and it's a, it's a kind environment. I, you know, not meaning to, to look like it's harsh. No, it's very, very kind. But we gently guide you so that your, your homework of your decluttering and the things that you need to do with Christina is, is done. So we do offer this money back guarantee. So if you can honestly tell us at the end of the day that your child is not calm and calmer, that you're not more confident in your education plan and that your home is not tidier and nicer to live in, we will cheerfully refund your money, but uh, we've never had to. Okay. Uh, and if that weren't enough with a money back guarantee, uh, we also offer yet and not only do you meet with us one on one um, each week, but we are offering uh I've been running one for the last three years with amazing success, a, an ultra private Facebook group. Nobody can even find it. It's a it, it is that private. And what happens in that? You get to share your surprise, your, 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 well, your surprises, yes, and your successes and your challenges. And these, these people in this other group I've been running, they, they're fast friends. They've never met, uh, most of them have never met each other in person, but they could be brother and sister living all across the United States and in Canada, by the way. One of them is right down the street from me, by the way. And, and in this group, you suddenly get another family to bounce off ideas off of, the education ideas of oh, this is happening. So you get a family community as well when this group gets together. And if you talk nicely to us, we might be convinced to throw in a few uh, group calls so you can actually uh, look at each other on the, on, on the small screen and say, hi. <laughs> All right. And the, the top is the this my favorite favorite bonus is something I've been using successfully with my clients and that is the I don't know if they'll be able to see it um the app uh is the boxer app 
Voxer, if you're not familiar with it, is a walkie-talkie app. Um, yeah, I'll show it on them. Okay. Can can they see the little orange? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Like that? Okay. Anyway, it's a happy little orange walkie-talkie, and what it does is it's basically a messaging app. Um, if and it's either text or audio, but the thing about it is you have with this seven day access to us. I'm going to say that again, seven day access to us so that you, if you don't have an excuse to get stuck. You will never get stuck. You're thinking, I just want to scream. You just you just get on that horn and you rant for a couple minutes and that is that in middle of the week because I I don't think I can wait to talk to Christina or Kitty until next week I got to do it now or what am I going to do with all of these boxes or what have you we are there and we are there for you and that. I can't put a dollar value on it I tried putting a dollar value on these bonuses and that uh, I'll tell you. The my clients have experienced the Voxer and they just say, Oh, it's priceless. I I I know I can get Kitty anytime. Now, maybe not for a couple of hours, but the reason the Voxer app is because when I see that little icon, then there's one there right now, three, three messages waiting for me. I know the clients need me. It is a client only app. And that's why that's why Christina has agreed that we can include it in the program because we know that you're when you need us, you need us like 2D sweetie right now. And that's why we included that. We're good so far. We are. That so sounds far. pretty amazing. All right. Thank is you. I, I think this is awesome. Okay, we're gonna leave you with uh, additional bonuses. If you're one of the first five to enroll in our program, um, you will receive Christina's six session uh, recorded reading comprehension program. And she's going to throw in a bonus 30 minute Q&A, value 497. And you will also receive two 90 minute classroom recordings from that I have done to reinforce your decluttering process. You will be learning, but sometimes you need a little bit of extra uh, inspiration in the background while you're decluttering. Okay, I've got Kitty here. Uh, she's here while I'm doing this. Okay, we're, we're good. Um, everything is fine. I, I, my clients tell me that I'm a good grounding force. Yes. So that is what we are throwing in. Again, uh, all of this, we've got the four double coaching sessions in the, in the 30 days. We've covered what, what that's about. We've covered the, uh, the money back guarantee. We've covered the, uh, the Facebook group and the Voxer app and um, what you'll get if you're one of the first five to enroll. And that's what we have for now. Knowing us, we're probably going to start throwing throwing a few more things in. We are making this offer open only until we're Thursday right now. Um, let's 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 put a limiter on it till uh, Tuesday. Okay. Shall we make it Tuesday or Wednesday? Wednesday. Let's give them oh. the next one. Okay, sounds good. As you can see, we are a team effort, Christina and I. So yeah. it will be available until midnight Wednesday. So uh, we um, we will be including the links that you need to uh, to either talk to us. Oh, that's what I forgot. Is we'll be provide if you know right now that this is the right program for you, then we're prepared to take an extra $100 off. All you need to do is you'll click the link, you'll book your first appointment with Christina, and you will get this amazing program for not $17.97, but $16.97. And so we'll give you the link for that and you can be booked. You can start working with us next Tuesday. You can start working with us immediately. Uh, now, if you if you think you need to think about it a little bit, I get it. We get it. 
it's a, you know, it's, it's a fair bit of dough, but don't forget, it's also an investment in your sanity and your child's furniture, furniture, <laughs> did I say that? <laughs> Future. <laughs> I think I must be getting hungry. <laughs> I need to declutter my stomach. Uh, um, and you may be saying, so we're going to keep it open until, until next Wednesday. If you have any questions, we're also going to be providing the link so that you can meet with us and, um, and we can answer any questions you have and see if this program is right for you. Because frankly, if we don't think that it's right for you, then we'll tell you, we're not going to take your money. Plain wow. Okay. So you may be saying to yourself, I don't know, I need to think about it, or I don't have the money, or um, I'll, I'll look at it in a couple of months. But what I want to ask you now is, what if you do nothing now and nothing changes? Oh, everything's going to change. You have to take action. Exactly. Action breeds change. Yeah. What if your home is still chaotic and your child is cranky and his grades keep slipping? Just ask yourself that. What if your home is still chaotic, your child is cranky and his grades keep slipping? Will you wish then that you would click the link now? Let's chat. Let's talk. Would you like to close our out? Kitty, I am so grateful that you decided to come and help me out with this because I think it truly is a blessing because it was one of those things I was thinking about. I was like, you know, I can do all this talking about education and I can help kind of try change behaviors and things like that and help coach parents. But if there's that little kind of like thorn in the side and that's kind of what that clutter kind of does is that little thorns like things are always kind of unrestful it doesn't let it complete the process so I believe the two of us together really make for a great team and will help parents raise those happy healthy and successful kids ladies and gentlemen everybody who's listening and watching thank you for sticking with us thank you for listening I hope that Kitty's tips my tips at least will start the change and please join us so we can help you make that bigger change and make this a great school year for you and your family and your kids. Amen. And can I add one thing to that? Go for it. All right. Our goal is for you to have happy, healthy children who grow up into successful adults. We've said this before. They will have a lifelong love of learning. Their college money will be invested wisely with a strong goal and purpose. No, no, I should go to college. Uh, you know, yeah, there's $20,000 down the drain. <laughs> no, they're going to have a goal. They're going to have a purpose. And they will have not only strong family values, which will go to their families that, that they have, um, and the basics of living. All of the comforts and yet a good education at the same time and budgeting. Yeah, um, because it has been part of their school experience at home with you. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. And we'll see you on the other side of the video when you click that link and start those coaching sessions. Bye for now. Bye.